Escudito passes a new homelessness policy cracking down on crime. Why not everyone is in support. Former Chula Vista Councilwoman Andrea Cardenas and her brother plead guilty to felony charges related to money obtained from COVID relief funds. The U.S. Supreme Court agrees to look at former President Trump's claims of immunity, how quickly the court will hear arguments and potentially reach a decision. NASA's Artemis II practice mission lands in San Diego. We'll tell you how coming up. A family is fighting for their daughter's right to free speech as she faces expulsion from a local middle school over a social media post she shared off campus. Visitors line up to see and smell this corpse flower's stinking bloom in a San Francisco museum. CBS 8 News live at 11 starts right now. Tonight, the city of Escondido is moving forward with a new tougher policy on homelessness, but it's already getting mixed reviews. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. This new policy prioritizes public safety while also stressing the need to help Escondido's unsheltered population before helping anyone else. CBS 8's Richard Allen has more on this new approach and the reception it's receiving. Thank you, Richard. Uh, San Diegans are already casting votes for the March primary. One item on the ballot, California Proposition 1, a multi-billion dollar bond. Under Prop 1, California would borrow $6.4 billion. Two billion of that would be spent on homelessness, while the rest of the money would pay for new facilities for mental health and addiction treatment. It's a statewide bond, so it only needs a simple majority to pass. The money would come from the state's general fund. Prop 1 works exactly like nearly every bond in California does. It says this won't raise your taxes specifically. It'll just add to the overall debt level that, that the state has to pay. Several other bond-related measures will likely make it to the November ballot. San Diego City Attorney Mara Elliott is pushing to strengthen laws to protect reproductive rights here in San Diego. This follows Alabama's state Supreme Court ruling that says frozen embryos are children and the people who destroy the embryos can be held liable for wrongful death. As everyone knows, reproductive rights are under attack in this country. The shocking decision by the Alabama Supreme Court this month is only the most recent example. California has chosen a different course. We have chosen to lead on this issue. Elliott wants to update laws to protect women seeking care at reproductive clinics from harassment. Elliott says her office plans to introduce an ordinance at a public safety committee meeting next month. Former Chula Vista City Councilwoman Andrea Cardenas and her brother pleaded guilty today to felony charges. The two admit to lying on their unemployment benefits application and to lying to the Small Business Administration to collect a PPP loan. Andrea Cardenas stepped down from her Chula Vista seat, uh, excuse me, Chula Vista City Council seat last week. She could have her charges reduced to misdemeanors as early as her sentencing. Her brother, Jesus, must complete two years of probation before he can apply to have his felonies dropped to misdemeanors. Tonight we have an update on the young gray whale that was found dead in La Jolla Shores last week. Today, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said there was no clear cause of death, but noted the whale was thin and in poor condition. The whale, which was just a few years old, washed ashore on Thursday. NOAA hopes that a deeper analysis of biological samples taken from the whale will provide greater insight into its cause of death. Today, crews working on the Otai River Estuary Restoration Project celebrated the completion of the second round of work in the San Diego Bay. This restoration project will restore nearly 125 acres of coastal wetlands to the southern part of the bay. One of the goals is to increase the variety of bird and fish species in the area. They provide vital green open space, nature watching, walkable and bikeable trails that make Imperial Beach a wonderful place to call home. The project has created more than 100 jobs. Developers of the Carlsbad desalination plant are assisting with this project. The United States is sending a crewed spaceship to the moon for the first time in more than 50 years, and San Diego is playing a key role. The Orion test capsule is at Naval Base San Diego, along with the astronauts it will carry. Tonight, CBS 8's Jasmine Ramirez has more on all the preparation being done here for the Artemis II mission. 
The astronauts will be returning to Earth in a space capsule and splashing down right off of our coast. Then a ship similar to the one you see behind me will be going out to get them. Exciting. Still ahead, the fight over a student's freedom of speech, the social media post that got her suspended, plus what a First Amendment attorney is saying. Plus, fast spreading wildfires are ravaging parts of the Lone Star State, the extent of the devastation tonight. And the Supreme Court is set to make a historic decision on presidential immunity, how their decision may impact Donald Trump in November. Cloud cover is going strong for tonight. We do have the marine layer that is back. We'll have cooler temperatures all the way into the weekend. And this weekend, cooler, cloudy, gusty, and a chance for some rain. All those details are coming up. The Supreme Court will soon weigh in on whether former President Donald Trump can be prosecuted over charges he interfered with the results of the 2020 election. The court says it will consider Trump's immunity from being prosecuted for official acts performed while in office. The high court will hear arguments the week of April 22nd, with a decision likely no later than the end of June. If the Supreme Court rules against Trump, it could set up a trial for later this year, before the presidential election. Comedian and actor Richard Lewis has died. His publicist says Lewis died at his home in Los Angeles last night after suffering a heart attack. Lewis was a regular nightclub and late night TV performer who eventually found success in movies like Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm. He announced last year he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Lewis was 76 years old. A fight at an El Cajon school and the social media post about it that followed are adding to a national debate on students' First Amendment rights. The 12-year-old girl is now facing expulsion. She and her dad admit the post was inappropriate, but they feel the district is violating her constitutional rights. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan has the latest on what has become a hot topic at schools throughout the country. Police made two more arrests today in connection to abandoned high-rise towers that are covered with graffiti. Officers say they received tips of more groups climbing over the barricades overnight to enter the building. So far, nearly 30 people have been arrested. L.A. city leaders put a multi-million dollar plan into place earlier this month to try and stop this problem, which includes having a dozen officers guard the towers 24 hours a day. Right now, at least five wildfires are spreading across parts of Texas, threatening towns, forcing evacuations, and cutting off power to thousands. At this hour, officials say one of those fires is already the second largest in the state's history. The Smokehouse Creek Fire started Monday in Hutchinson County and has grown to an estimated 850,000 acres with just 3% containment. That's nearly the size of Dallas, Houston, and Fort Worth combined. Also tonight, we've learned at least one person has died. The extent of damage from the fire is still being assessed. Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis tracking uh, weather that's headed our way. Pretty day today, but uh, you've been warning us things are going to be changing. Yeah, things are definitely changing in the forecast by the weekend. Now we have high pressure as our main weather maker, area of low pressure that is exiting towards the east. Unfortunately, not a lot of a moisture associated with it. A smell of success only a biologist could love. And a bunch of corpse flower fans. After the break, the rare flower drawing crowds to a Bay Area museum. Tonight, a company is showcasing its new wearable technology, adding more competition for Apple Watches and Fitbits, I guess. <coughs> Motorola is releasing its bendable smartphone at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. It looks like a regular phone, but it can be bent and set on your wrist to wear as a bracelet, mm. freeing up an extra hand. The phone can also be adjusted into a self-standing position to view the screen. Yeah, that bracelet aspect's a little overrated to me. I'm afraid I would I would snap it in half. Yeah. yeah. The only bracelet I want to wear is like that. It's like a slap bracelet. <laughs> From and that ain't back. it. And that ain't it. And this ain't it either. Mm -hmm. um, we'll all politely decline this one. All right. A corpse flower blooming in San Francisco is drawing crowds anxious to smell the plant's unique scent. The California Academy of Sciences has named the plant Mirage, and it is the museum's first ever corpse flower bloom. Corpse flowers get their name from the powerful stench they produce while in bloom. You can kind of guess, given the name. It's mm. once every few years or so, and while it is beauty, it's captivating. It is? Yeah, <laughs> apparently, because these crowds are always willing to wait hours, even here in San Diego. The San Diego Botanic Garden has one. Mm -hmm. This flower gets its smell 
uh, and its name because it smells like rotting flesh. The bloom can typically last for up to three days, although museum says it was already at its peak today. Jake was first in line. No, thank you. How was it, Jake? Did you see that guy in the video had his whole he's head right, thing? Right there. That, that guy was not messing he's, around. He's not breathing. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I guess I would do it. I'm an experienced guy. I'd try it out.